strange day, this, or, or at least a strange story. You may be aware of some fairly epic scandals that have unfolded in the last few days on, on the political front. I, forgive me if I am now bringing these to your attention for the first time. You may need to sit down and, and perhaps moderate your breathing or, 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 or consult your GP about your blood pressure because there are two stories bouncing about that are, abs- I mean, they're, they're up there with Watergate for me, or that time that Boris Johnson and Jacob Rees-Mogg tried to rip up the rule book of parliamentary standards after their mate Owen Paterson got busted for breaking the rules. And these are massive scandals. I, I, and if you're unaware of them, apologies for ruining your Monday. Keir Starmer moved the picture in Downing Street and Angela Rayner was filmed dancing while on holiday. Uh, absolutely huge tales that perhaps give some indication of... Uh, if we were to be serious for a moment, why right-wing media is going through a period of absolutely hilarious discombobulation, trying to pretend that those stories are important when they are patently not. But here's a story involving a Labour MP, which, to my eyes, is a very, very big deal and a very, very big problem for Keir Starmer. And yet, for reasons that we may explore... It doesn't appear to be attracting anything like the negative attention that has been directed at Keir Starmer for moving a painting or Angela Rayner for daring to dance in public. Now, I know that they are the leader, respectively, and deputy leader of the Labour Party and therefore, by definition, better or bigger stories. But it doesn't matter, really, if a Labour MP is on the hook for, to my eye, atrocious conduct. You can use him as a weapon with which to hit the leader and the deputy leader of the Labour Party. So two thoughts occur to me. The first is, perhaps, that the that there's something going on I'm missing. I've, I've confessed to you on many occasions <laughs> my absolutely atrocious news sense, the way that my antennae tend to twitch at uh, entirely inappropriate moments. And, and sometimes a story I think deserves a heck of a lot more coverage for perfectly reasonable reasons doesn't actually. I am, in other words, just wrong. Um, and vice versa, stories that I don't think are a very big deal at all are actually desperately important, although I'm fairly confident that Keir Starmer moving a painting and Angela Rayner doing some dancing are not big stories. So either this is yet another example of my news antennae twitching inappropriately, or there are some interesting reasons why the kind of people pretending to be very exercised by Keir Starmer moving a painting or Angela Rayner doing some dancing are not really going in hard on this story. That might be an element of our conversation. Why wouldn't they get worked up about this? Um, because I think it's really, really bad. Jazz Athwell is the newly installed MP for Ilford South. I don't like... You know that I don't like binary politics. I, 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 I don't like the way that the two extremes to the left and the right can often appear to be more similar to each other when it comes to intolerance and unpleasantness than they are to everybody that sits between the two positions. So I I don't like lazy, uh, uh, quasi-ideological posturing. But when I read this sentence, I did find myself wondering whether it was entirely compatible with what I would loosely describe as Labour values. The MP for Ilford South owns 15 properties, making him the biggest landlord in the House of Commons. That's not the scandal, let me be clear. But it is perhaps a first cause for pause. Should a Labour MP be a landlord on, on at all, let alone on that sort of scale? I can just about see a case for having one or two properties. If, for example, you, you, you've moved out of the marital home or becoming an MP means you've moved house, you've got a place in the constituency or you've, moved, you've rented out the... I can just about see how if it has become a sort of circumstantial property scenario as opposed to a business model but I, I, I don't know how naive do I sound when I say to you, I wonder if this breaks down on left and right. So oddly, if you're right wing, you want to defend the Labour MP, you're going to have to come up with some sort of bogus allegation of hypocrisy in order to attack him. But I don't think a Labour MP should have 15 rental properties. I suppose you could begin to make a case for a Labour MP having 15 rental properties if he was a model landlord, if he was an absolute paragon 
of landlord virtue and could therefore be used as an exemplar with which to criticise landlords who do not prioritise their tenants, who do not look after their properties, who do not tick every box, dot every I, cross every T, and offer up a model of landlording to which all other landlorders can then be compelled to aspire. But he sure ain't that, folks. Oh, no. It's a brilliant piece of journalism, actually, by the BBC, by a journalist specifically I should single out for praise called Joe Pike, because... Uh, eagle-eared listeners may remember when Joe was working here at LBC and, and we marked him out as, at the time as a, as a young man who was clearly going places. And this is an, a, a brilliant piece of journalism because he refused to let go. He established first that a Labour MP, who is the biggest landlord in the House of Commons, was renting out flats in an absolutely unacceptable state. Um, I, I mean, to name but a few of the scenarios from which he was profiting, there were um, flats where the fire alarms were hanging off the ceilings, there was a washing machine dumped next to a set of stairs. Most importantly, I think, there are several instances, um, in fact, in a block of seven, he owns the whole um, uh, block, half the tenants claimed they had to regularly clean their bathroom ceilings to remove mould. Now, I am a bit of a bore when it comes to mould. There are two things that I think are going to be defining health stories of the of the next decades, next few decades. One is the relationship between your gut flora and your mental health, which I happen to believe is an absolute uh, 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 Mount Everest of science and information I honestly and the more I read about it the more I research it the more interesting it gets but I can't come on the radio every morning and start talking about your gut flora and your mental health because it's not that sort of program but that is just just for the record that is something that I think is going to turn out to be an absolutely epic uh, medical issue and it is already becoming one the other is is the impact that mold can have on people uh, I, I, I think this is again a very under um, reported and uh, and misunderstood phenomenon. But if if someone tells me, for example, that they, they have a child who has suddenly started displaying symptoms um, that might appear to be more like mental health symptoms than physical health symptoms, the first question I will ask them is if they've recently had a flood or if they have mould in their house. Uh, uh, various reasons and experiences for me to have arrived at this conclusion. But I think that's another area of science, of medical science, that is going to explode in the coming years. Uh, but it hasn't exploded yet, so you cannot uh, use it, it, it but what it might turn out to be as a stick with which to beat Jazz Athwell for being the landlord of properties that are riddled with black mould. But you shouldn't be renting out properties that are riddled with black mould. So the story's moved through various stages, beginning with the mould, the infestations, the dirty communal areas, the lights that did not work. And we began with a denial. It was essentially denied by the MP that he uh, was presiding over this kind of property, if you could call it an empire. Um, uh, originally, when approached by the BBC, his agent said, I have no statement at this time. But Athwell was essentially denying responsibility for what had gone on. Then, as Joe Pike continued to dig, um, uh, the MP released a statement describing himself as furious about the appalling state of the flats he owns. Uh, and I, I think language is important here because the, the statement or, or one report says, Mr. Athwell has described himself as furious after the appalling state of flats he rents out in East London was revealed. Uh, and I sort of thought, well, I prefer the phrase owns or profits from. Rents out sounds a bit anodyne, don't you think? Uh, he said to be furious about the state of the flats he owns or the state of the flats he rents to people much poorer than him for money, for profit. But again, I'm worried that I'm sounding like a communist. Uh, what's wrong with being a landlord? In and of itself, nothing. But is it compatible with Labour values? I don't know. I don't think it is. I've got to be honest with you. Not 15 flats. And then... We come to what, for me, well, there are two elements of the story that, to me, are much bigger issues than anybody else seems to think. And by that, oddly, I mean the, the, the members of my profession who are normally queuing up to attack Labour politicians for saying boo to a goose. The first bit is that when he was the leader of Redbridge Council, he introduced legislation that required landlords to have 
licenses that would, I think, have involved the properties being checked for precisely the sort of problems that they had. And despite being the one who introduced the rules, he wasn't obeying them. So he didn't have the correct property licenses that were required under a scheme he introduced as Redbridge Council leader. And he claimed originally that he had. So, again, how much of an excuse can it be to say, as he has done, it was all my agent's fault? And that is the statement. I'm shocked and sickened by the series of problems that have come to light and I am unreservedly sorry to all my tenants for the bad experience they have endured. I will be reimbursing every tenant that is out of pocket for repairs or renewals they have had to undertake. I will be issuing each tenant with a personal apology and meeting with them urgently. Now, I'm a bit cynical sometimes. And I don't like being cynical. I'm not, I'm not going to pretend that I do. It sometimes comes very naturally to me, but I don't like being cynical. And my first re reaction on reading that was, gosh, what a refreshingly unequivocal apology that is. I know you're probably laughing at me now, aren't you? Oh, James, I've got a bridge I want to sell you. Uh, what a refreshingly unequivocal apology that is. After 14 years of politicians being caught doing things they shouldn't have been doing and either completely ignoring the story or, or signing up their cheerleaders to pretend that they'd done nothing wrong or indeed trying to pass legislation in the House of Commons to change the rules that they'd actually broken, I was, I was, briefly, I was briefly uplifted by the idea or by the simple and unequivocal nature of this apology. Shocked and sickened, series of problems, unreservedly sorry, reimbursing everybody, out of, uh, and issuing each tenant with a personal apology and meeting with them urgently. So that's nice. And then, is it the voice of cynicism that kicks in then and says, well, he's a bit worried, isn't he? He's moving heaven and earth to make sure he hangs on to his job. So again, I, d I don't know. And... I realised, to my embarrassment, that I've probably spent the last few years setting up my approach to stories involving political malfeasance by seeing what the cheerleaders were doing and then being fairly confident that all we have to do as voices of honesty and integrity, all we have to do is do the opposite. You know, so if they try to change the rules in order to protect their friend who's broken the rules, we, 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 we favour the rules. If, you know, a prime minister lies to the House of Commons, we remind everybody how important it is not to lie to the House of Commons. If, uh, if a sitting MP goes off to uh, eat ostrich anuses in the jungle without permission from her whips, we point out that she should never really be allowed anywhere near um, high office again. It's, it's, it's been pretty straightforward. So um, I think this is a really big deal. I think this is appalling, absolutely appalling for, a, for, a, for an MP of any party particularly for a Labour MP, to be close to a slum landlord, it seems to me, because the complaints from his tenants went unheeded. When he's caught, he denies it. When he's presented with evidence he can no longer deny, he backtracks and apologises and blames it entirely upon his agent, who he appointed. <sighs> so I'm pretty sure this is a really bad story. But why am I, as a, as a, a, a loosely left-wing journalist, more upset and excited about it than all of the people that are pretending to be enraged and infuriated about Keir Starmer moving a painting or Angela Rayner doing some dancing? I don't know. 0345 6060973 is the number that you need. I, I want you to tell me what you think of this story. How, how big a hole has Jazz Athwell dug for himself, Athwell dug for himself with this story? Is it in any way defensible that you can own 15 properties, most of which appear to be in states, various states of disrepair and disgrace? Is it, is it acceptable to blame your management agency, who he said he will be replacing with, within 48 hours? It's a little bit shaggy, isn't it? It wasn't me. You own the flats, mate. And, and, and you employ the agent, mate. And your tenants are living in relative squalor. You also introduced a license scheme as leader of Red Ridge Council that your own properties are not compliant with. Again, is that the biggest element of the story? 
What, what is it you do? I'm leader of Redbridge Council. What's your greatest achievement? I've introduced landlord property licences. Are you a landlord? Yes. Have you have you checked that all your properties are compliant with the licences that you're introducing? No. So that's, for me, an issue of incompetence as opposed to an issue of morality. I don't know that there's an issue of legality yet. Perhaps there will turn out to be because I don't think this story is going away. But I, I think there is a, a, a there's an immoral element to this story. I hold landlords who expect their tenants to continue paying their rent while living in circumstances that they wouldn't tolerate themselves in the lowest regard. I think there's a competence element to this story. How on earth can you introduce legislation as leader of the council that your own properties don't comply with? And I think there's a political element to this story as well, which is, and this might be naive, if you're a Labour politician, isn't it worse that you're a dodgy landlord than it would be if you were... Or is that my biases coming? Like, I expect right-wing people to exploit the poor. I ex not all of you, but I, expect, I, I kind of expect this kind of behaviour from a Tory. I'd be much less shocked. So is it fair... That might be a nice place to start, actually. Is it fair to be more shocked by a Labour MP behaving in this manner than, than I would be by a Tory MP. And then, of course, um, the other question is, what's it like to live in a flat that is close to inhabitable, but when you try and complain, what's it like to, comp what's it like to try and get a response from an agent or a landlord when the flat or the home that you're living in is not fit for purpose? Should we get the phone, lo phone lines open? I'd say, really, in a way, it's a long introduction, that, but you're used to it by now. In a way, I've given you all of the details of a story I think is both fascinating and more important than much of the media is currently allowing. It may be because it's a BBC story. Sometimes right-wing newspapers don't like to give the BBC the credit for having done some quality journalism, but I don't think it's that on this one. There's all the details there, and I suppose, in a way, I'm just saying, what do you think of this one? Because I think it stinks. I think it absolutely stinks. And... I think if I was Keir Starmer, I, I would have said something about it by now. I don't know. Is it a whip removal issue or does that sound like an overreaction? Labour MP, 15 properties, mould on the ceilings, fire alarms dangling from the wall, tenants having their calls go unanswered. Oh, it's all the agent's fault. I don't know. Find out what you think about this story after this.